so let's start off with getting to know a little bit more about you. The battle you took on required a ton of courage. So tell us, where did your courage come from? Well, I would say for the most part, it came from my father and all my time in as a scout, uh, as a youth. Uh, became an Eagle Scout, uh, where I learned a lot about perseverance. I learned a lot about courage. I learned a lot about public service. And then also my father, who, you know, told me that uh, at, uh, at during high school and even before that, he said, you know, if you can't do it right the first time, when are you going to have time to do it again? And that stayed with me the whole time, which is why I took on this fight and why I came to the the fulfillment of what we all hope will give uh, many, many public sector workers the freedom to make their own choice and ex exercise their First Amendment rights. Yeah, you really uh, hit on an important point there, Mark, that I really appreciate you, met, you emphasizing, which is this was one of the most important free speech cases of our generation, the Janus case that's named after you. Um, this was ultimately about free speech. It wasn't about anti-union, it was about freedom of speech. Uh, I wanna just follow up on what Kelly just asked you and sort of dig a, dig a little deeper. The Bible tells us the story of a young shepherd boy named David, who many people are familiar with, whether they're uh, Christians or not. They, they know the story of King David of Israel. And we know that he slew this giant named Goliath with a sling and a stone. But before David was a giant slayer, he was a shepherd's boy tending to his father's flocks. And he talks about how he, he killed a lion and he killed a bear to protect his flocks. And that prepared him and equipped him for facing uh, the giant Goliath that he would later face. Circling back to your childhood, is there a specific story that comes to mind from whether it's your childhood or your young adult days when you had to take a bold stand with your metaphorical slingshot and a stone <laughs> to to take out a lion or a bear that you feel helped prepare you for that that battle before the Supreme Court? Well, I I would have to say it it again goes back to my scouting days. Uh, you know, learning to be out out in the wilderness, fending for myself, and having to complete a whole variety of tasks uh, in order to earn that that highest rank. Uh, and it was during a time that scouts was may not have been the in thing or the vogue thing at the time, uh, and people were always. Uh, you know, detracting from it, uh, even though it was very popular, uh, there were still the detractors. And the idea that you can stay with it when you've got, especially when you get into high school, you know, when you're starting to get into cars and uh, thinking down the road for college, and you're also, you know, starting to date and, you know, become uh, familiar with your friends and making fast friendships that last your whole life. I would say that perseverance and that uh, continuation to, to get to that ultimate goal was probably the, the thing that led to uh, what I did and when I did it. Yeah, so Mark, Nikki and I are familiar with your story, but let's get our audience up to speed. Can you walk us through your career, where you started in your career? Where were you? What was your job? When you filed your first lawsuit? How did this all start? Well, it, it all started um, back in uh, when I joined the state of Illinois as a child support specialist. And during the initial uh, HR intake, you know, you're you're signing all kinds of forms. Uh, you know, you're you begin to you know want to get into the job. You want to begin to learn the ropes and the like. And of course, naturally, you're also looking for that first paycheck. Mm -hmm. Well, that first paycheck had a line item deduction right along with all your taxes and pension, and health care, et cetera. And it says that I was paying union dues. Well, that's what I thought was odd because I never signed a union pledge card. Hmm. Nobody ever said anything to me about joining the union. So why am I paying 
union dues. Uh, asked around to my peers, and they said, oh, yeah, you have to pay the union or to work here for the state of Illinois. If you don't pay the union, you can't hold your job. Well, I thought originally that was ludicrous, uh, quite frankly. I mean, why do I have to pay somebody to have a job? That, to me, just doesn't make sense at all. Uh, but the, the uh, idea of trying to do a good job you know, trying to do what I needed to do as a child support specialist, I kind of put that on the back burner and kind of forgot about it for a number of years. Well, why did why did you have to pay a union to have your job, especially if you didn't sign anything? Well, because unions uh, a number of years ago went to the state legislator, uh, legislature, I'm sorry, and they said that uh, they set up a law that said if you work for the uh, state of Illinois and you're under a government uh, collective bargaining unit uh, with your job title, you have to join the union, have to pay dues. Now, since I was not officially a full member and I was only a non-member, I had to pay approximately 80% of full membership dues, which quite frankly was not, there was only the difference of maybe about $6 every paycheck. Um, and therefore, I was covered under that collective bargaining agreement. And therefore, the union spoke on my behalf, even if I didn't want them to. And that was all because the state of Illinois passed a law in cahoots with the union, the public sector unions, like AFSCME. So or to you, hold that job. You weren't part of the union. You weren't technically a union member, but they were representing you and bargaining for you, even if you didn't ask them to and didn't want them to. Correct. Yes, did, because did, yeah, go ahead. I was covered under that job. Yeah, I was covered under that job title. You know, that. The, oh, that, I see. Uh, under the, jo was, under and there, like and the job. And there were class. hundreds and hundreds of job titles within the state of Illinois that was uh, covered under a much larger collective bargaining. Uh, contract with the state of Illinois. Okay. And so then um, you, you've you learned this, you think it's, not, that's, by the way, not an insignificant amount of money that we're talking about. I oversaw personnel for the state of Alaska and all the bargaining agreements and taking that much money out of somebody's paycheck um, multiple times a year actually adds up to a significant amount of money by the end of the year. So you go back to being a um, child support specialist. So you're, you're working on getting kids the money that they need in order to live and uh, go back to being a government civil servant employee for many years. Um, for, this goes on for over a decade. And the Illinois state government um, is taking your money and passing it along to AFSCME. Is that all correct? That is correct. Yes. They basically treated me like an ATM machine. <laughs> uh, that's how I put it. Because, And the reason I say that is because the money kept coming out of my paycheck, going to the union, uh, and I didn't have any say in the matter. I had no choice and I had no voice. Did you have other people who, with whom you were interacting who were of, also covered under that collective bargaining agreement who felt like they had no choice either and, and struggled with that? At the time, no, uh, that wasn't discussed and, and it, uh, that information was not forthcoming. Uh, the, the, what I did learn though is after I filed the case and, and we eventually went to the Supreme Court, I found there was much greater support than what I had originally oh. thought. I thought, well, there's a few people here and there that might do it, but uh, in the end, there was a much greater percentage than what I had even uh, thought about.